Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do art tutorials and painting videos. For today, like I promised, I have a nature scenery landscape since a lot of you seem to love these. I start by taping down my paper that helps it stay flat since I am using just a 200 grams sketchbook, which is very light actually. I have a basic landscape sketch and I color the sky and the lake with a bright blue. The exact shade from this set is actually Taylor blue and I'm using it very lightly with barely any pressure. Then I take Helio Blue Reddish, which is my darker blue, and I cover the mountains with it. I use less pressure on the mountain that is further away and more pressure on the closer mountain to make it darker, since faraway objects tend to look dull and pale compared to things we have closer to us. Then I use cadmium orange over the blue, again less pressure on the mountain behind and more pressure on the one closer to us. The reason I am using orange is once it mixes with blue they cancel each other out and make a nice warm gray, almost black color. And for nature landscapes, I find that mixing your own colors makes it look much more balanced than if I were to grab the gray or black that comes in the set. Then I cover the entire grassy field we have surrounding the lake with an earthy green. I darken up that little space uh, that little piece of land under the mountain with more green aka more pressure on that green pencil and a bit of orange. Again, since uh, orange is made by yellow and red, you know, you mix yellow and red, you get orange, there's red in that, and red is what cancels out green. So that is why you can use it in this case. It's just going to make it look a bit more natural, a bit more dark without giving that black hint if I were to just grab a darker gray or black from my set. Once I have my base colors on paper, I go over with my watercolor brush. You can do this in pretty much any order starting from any uh, subject you have, but I like starting from the sky and the lake. I just go right to left until the pencil marks the solve fully with barely any water on my brush. Since I'm using higher grade pencils, that means they are, or at least should be, very pigmented and I really don't need to use much pressure or much water to get nice results. And since I'm using very little water, it dries pretty much instantly, so I don't have to wait for it. I tackle the first row of mountains without worrying they will mix with the sky or something similar. Just go over them with my brush and then I go over the second row. I like to first go over the mountain edge and then blend the insides. Then I blend the field left to right just like I did with the sky. Once dry I take my green and I color the trees with it. Just some evergreens. If drawing is not your thing, you can find a traceable of this and many many other tutorials over at my Patreon page Sunshine Arts and by doing so you also help support me and the channel. The reference slash inspiration for this painting uh, will be linked down below in the description box along with all of the supplies used, mentioned and alternatives to them. So I quickly went with a bit of black on the right side of the trees for a little shadow and I added very rough vertical scribbles over uh, the field on the bottom side that is going to be a little flower bed with my earthy green. Then I add some hints of Taylor blue and cadmium orange. I add a bit of yellow ochre to the left and there since uh, in the picture there was like this little path or landmass. I'm not really sure but I'm just adding it. Again with a hint of blue and orange that are the colors I used through the whole painting and repeating them is just going to help balance the color scheme. Using Helio blue 
I roughly sketch and reverse the shape of the mountain and trees over the lake for reflection and color it again with blue and orange. I add tiny grass blades or flowers, think of them as you please. I'm just making random lines with green around the lake. I make them tinier up in the distance and bigger as they get closer to us. Then I scribble over the edge with green. I actually forgot to erase the initial pencil sketch, so it's going to show through a bit too much for my liking and I'm going to fix it in a bit. I add a couple of bulbs with dark brown and I add a lot of tiny dots with pink over the flower bed. I could have just used magenta from the set, but I wanted to try out this color and I noticed they look very similar in their dry state, so yeah, feel free to use magenta if you're using the same pencil set as me, it's going to look pretty much the same or whatever pink you have in your set. Then I blend and activate everything in this second layer. I start from the trees going light to dark, so from the left green side towards the right side that I colored with black. Then I tap over the landmass to activate that yellow ochre and blend out the reflections over the lake. If you're getting any value from this video so far, please let me know by liking, commenting, and if you have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel, it really helps. Plus, I'm trying to hit 20,000 subscribers before the end of September and we're almost there. I blend the grass or at least the edge, the shore, going up and down vertically and then the same with the flowers. Once dry, I try to erase the black line from my initial sketch with just a normal eraser. It did help a bit but not fully, so I'm going in with a third final layer, also because it was still too pale for my liking. I like my paintings a bit more saturated, a bit more uh, on the contrast, high contrast, so yeah, I'm just gonna quickly add one final layer to this. I go over with more green and more pressure where I erased the edge. I add more of my orange and blue also to neutralize the green or better give it a bit more depth because greens in nature are never a solid block of color. You have brighter spots, you have darker spots that are like dry leaves, so it just helps make it look a bit more real. I go over the shore with my brush. I also thought I'd darken up that tiny evergreen over the lake there with some blue for a shadow and then I keep adding more green to the field and smooth it down with my brush. Then I repeat the same steps for the flower bed. I add more green in a vertical motion like I'm just going up and down so to mimic the flower stems and grass that grows upwards. I put small hands of blue and orange, then I go over with what's pretty much a dry brush, again vertically, that's the direction we want, and we are done. Lastly, I just peel off the tape in the opposite direction to avoid it from tearing my paper. I'd like to give a very special thanks to my patrons for the month of September, and thank you all for watching, and we'll see each other next week with a new tutorial.